The solution? Air deck loading. Tom calculates the optimal distance between sticks of dynamite and uses a tape measure to position the explosives. This way, he gets the benefit of deck loading without the risk. At the base of the tower, Doug calculates another crucial load. The column I'm loading now is a big controlling column. There are four columns that are probably the most important in the building that we have to crack to allow it to bend and then eliminate completely. For each hole, I'll calculate how many cubic yards or percentage of a cubic yard each hole takes care of. And from, what, 35 years of experience, I know how much explosive it takes per cubic yard of this real brittle high-density concrete. Bad weather continues to plague the crew. Dangerous winds often confine them to the lower floors. But they can't delay anymore. Someone has to load columns on four of the upper floors. Once again, it's Jim's lucky day. The height's still gut-wrenching. But this time, there's no sunshine to comfort him. The change in weather pushes him to the edge. He's got a long way to go. 39 exposed columns still to load. CDI's wiring guru arrives on site, and she doesn't catch a break either. Every column and core the team has loaded needs to be wired. Stacy Luazo and her sister Devin are forced to brave the windy upper floors. Jeez. I'll lean into it here. I'd love to wait for this storm to pass and uh, be able to do this tomorrow, but unfortunately, the clock's ticking. We need to get this done today. We'll tough it out. No. Seriously, this is just sort of blowing around. It's a tangled mess. And the wiring has never been this complicated. The problem is, is the stairwells are sort of a mix and match between longitudinal drilling and spot drilling. And when wiring them, we have to treat them very differently. 